I've wanted to put driving lights on the FJ for a long time. As we all know, they're expensive. I didn't want to go too cheap because I know what that equals. And uh, so I've been saving every time I get to the point where I'm gonna buy lights, something else comes up. I have to buy camera equipment or this and that. And Oxbeam reached out to me a while back and they wanted me to try out some of their lights. I've put the headlights in here. That video you can find, I'll link it right here. And then uh, now I have these spotlights and I will say that these are incredibly, incredibly bright and we'll get to the beam patterns and all that stuff shortly. And this is the dark time of the year. So these will come in really handy because during the summer months, you really don't need them that much. But during the uh, fall and winter, as we start to lose daylight, they will come in handy. I just had a vehicle damaged by a deer three months ago and with all the part shortages and stuff, it took until today, literally today, I finally can go pick the car up. So if something like that happens to the FJ, I'd be without my vehicle for three months. Shortages are a problem, so I'm trying to protect the vehicle during the dark months. I did not pay for these lights. These were sent to me for free for testing. I have no obligation to say anything amazing about them. Uh, and so anyway, I'm gonna test them out. So you will notice that I have one of these upside down right now. I did that and I did that intentionally, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go over some of the features of these lights. These are 33,000. 332 lumens per set, which is absolutely insane how bright they are. In my initial testing, just pointing it at the mountainside out here, which was very impressive. It's just like using a spotlight when you're holding it in your hand. Um, what I found is it is primarily a spot beam. There's not much flood to it. And I'll know more about that once I actually drive with the things. I've been waiting to put these on so I could film on the bench first and then I can get to that down the road. So the way this review is gonna be, I'm gonna do part of it today, go around the features and talk about it. And I'll have an opinion after I've actually used them because if you watch my reviews before, I don't like to, I don't just take stuff and tell you good things about it. I'm gonna actually use these things. So the thing about Oxbeam that I mentioned in my other video on the headlights, was it the reason I'm okay with Oxbeam? as far as a budget light goes, is because they've been around for a long time. There's a lot of lighting companies out there that provide affordable lights, but they're not gonna exist, or they're building really cheap quality, really low quality products, and they don't exist to warranty it anymore. So I don't like going too cheap on Amazon. Oxbeam has been around for a very long time. My first light bar that I had over the windshield at one point in time was an Oxbeam. I'm more interested in these because these look good on an FJ Cruiser because of the seven inch round uh, headlights. First and foremost, these are made out of aluminum. They come with some pretty nice mounts here and uh, the hardware is pretty nice. These aren't tamper proof. They're Allen head. They look like they're stainless steel, which is nice. And then it has cooling fins on the back. A lot of budget lights in the past, you just basically get a pigtail and you'd have to wire that in. These actually have a Deutsch connector on them. In my experience in the automotive industry with heavy duty trucks is uh, these Deutsch connectors are better than something like a weather pack. Uh, they just seem like they have more fins on the rubber seal and they do a good job of keeping water out. So I, I am impressed with seeing that. Now, some of the issues that I have with these lights so far before even mounting them is this is a good method with a double bolt. It's a good method for keeping your light fixed to where it needs to be set. The problem is that it can only go so far because this side is cut in a way to where this can only bend so far. My Expedition 1 bumper has two spots for spotlights to be mounted and I cannot mount them on there because the lights will be pointed at the ground. So because of that, I'm gonna have to use some uh, aftermarket lighting brackets kind of. If you're mounting them flat, you won't have any problem at all. So I'm gonna mount them upside down on some aftermarket lighting brackets and that's why this one is upside down. So it will be mounted like this in the future. This company's come a long way. I mean, I did own some of their early stuff back when I was a broke off-roader and um, they have come a long way. The fit and finish on these is really nice. I really hope these hold up as far as weatherproofing. Again, if they leak, I will put that in the comments. So I will put links below, of course, for these if you're interested. I think right now, and it is November 3rd, I think, uh, right now you can get these for like 269, which in the grand scheme of things, compared to some of the other brands that make big lights like this, if you go up in uh, like American made stuff, you're getting into the 900 to $1,000 category if you wanna get something this bright. So the beam on these is kind of strange. I've never seen a, a round light projected beam like this. Maybe it exists across the industry and I just haven't seen it yet because I haven't had any big round lights like this, but it actually projects a perfect rectangular light and it's a spot beam and that thing is bright. It's pretty incredible. Uh, so I think the way it's intended to work is you have one that projects out 
and then the other projects out and so you get one big rectangle across your trail. If you're pointing too close in front of you, you're gonna have a small rectangle on the ground. And what I was finding is you really gotta point it far out before that rectangle really expands. So that's my purpose for these, but it might not be everybody's purpose. Maybe not everybody wants these as far as you can possibly see. And uh, I'm using these to basically dodge elk and occasionally use them off road. Cause like I said, it's gonna be dark starting next weekend at like 4.30, such a bummer. And then it comes with an inline fuse, a relay, and then a switch on here somewhere. There it is. And so for any of you guys that aren't into wiring, and I know a lot of people are intimidated by wiring, you have a positive and a negative, hook it to your battery, run your switch, and these lights are fully functioning. I'm personally gonna hook these up in a fashion to where they only work with my brights, just because when I'm traveling in the mountains, you're not supposed to use this kind of stuff on the road, but I do. So whenever I'm on the road and I see oncoming traffic down the way, I can just quickly turn my brights off and it makes it easier for me and uh, I can get them off in time to where I'm not blinding people just cause um, yeah, that's the way I prefer to have them wired. So I'm gonna use some of this harness, but some of it I'm gonna wire around. I've already got a relay pack. So I'll chop this wiring up myself, but it's nice that it comes with it. Uh, it comes with the Allen keys for these lights. It comes with the big hardware, the big washer, the big nut, all that stuff. And it comes with rubber pads, which I will not be able to use because of my mounting situation. Um, I don't wanna cut these up just yet. So I'll probably use my own piece of rubber underneath where I'm gonna mount them. The box, I don't know if you guys care about boxes. I know some people wanna see what the box looks like. If you guys are interested in the packaging on products like this, when I review them, please comment below. Cause I mean, I. I don't care about that thing, but I don't know, maybe some of you do. I'm more interested in what's inside the box. Yeah, I think that just about covers it. These are called the Upgraded 360 Pro Series. Uh, so yeah, that's what the light's called. I guess we'll get into everything else when the time comes next week. And so uh, my hair might be a little longer and I might be a little grumpier, but we'll go over the rest of the stuff with these lights then. Those are my headlights that I recently put in and they actually look brighter on camera. I'll try to tune that down. And then my brights, which I consider bright compared to what I had before. And then the new spot beams. And I will go a little farther down this road so you can really see how these look. So these lights have a pretty unique um, beam pattern and I didn't know about it at first, but now that I've used it, it's actually pretty useful. So we'll get right to that. So on the far hill here, you can see the beam pattern and it's very rectangular almost like you'd expect from a light bar. And of course, half of that is one of the lights, half of it is the other. And so um, it throws out like a perfect rectangle, but when they're put together, it's actually pretty useful. I know pretty much any company can manufacture a bright light, but these are pretty insane. So let's go up the road a little farther and I'll go over some more. So one downside of these lights is the styling. I don't like the yellow square blocks that go around the outside. It kind of glows from um, the sides whenever they're on, but I don't understand that styling cue. Uh, and honestly, it kind of makes the light look cheap. I think if these were just black all the way around, they would look much better. So these lights are like a third of the cost of like a Baja Designs, Rigid, ARB, any of the big players. And no, they are not made in the United States, of course. And uh, because of that, they're significantly cheaper. But um, for me, I wanted some lights and I'm trying to save up for another vehicle. And so I wanted to have some lights for this season. And then I'll still be using the FJ when I get the new vehicle. And so what I'm gonna do in the future is I'm gonna do a comparison of these lights versus something that's higher end. And uh, because I don't know how much better a light could be because these things are really bright. I mean, they light up the road. It turns it into daylight. In my Baja Designs fog lights that I have in the bumper, you can't even tell that they're on when I turn these lights on. So they are really bright. And for the cost, they're, it's pretty amazing what you get for the cost. And they're not cheap. That's the thing is the brackets are steel. I thought originally the, uh, the mounting brackets were aluminum, but they are steel. I had to modify mine slightly because of the way I mounted it on my bumper. One thing I can knock on these lights is the way the mounting is. If your bumper has a slight incline like mine, mine's an Expedition 1 bumper, the way it had to mount, it was gonna be facing at the ground. So I had to cut out some steel to where the light could pivot correctly. And I used a drill bit to do that. And I basically just elongated the, it's kind of like a half moon shape to where the light can move. And then it's secondary set screw tightens on that. So I had to do that four different times um, 
twice on each bracket, but I did make it work. But I do wish they would rethink that for people that want to mount these in a different way. I was going to try to mount them upside down from the top tube, uh, the top bull bar, but I wasn't able to do that. So I did have to do some drilling. And then um, after that, though, it worked great. And they are really sturdy brackets. And I do like that it has a dual set screw. That way it doesn't come loose over time. I mean, they, the, all the lights in my face are screwing with me. Jeez, I keep seeing things. <laughs> Dual set screw design on these is nice because then when you tighten them down, they won't just fold over like a cheap, cheaper light wood. Uh, I would consider these a budget light just because of their cost compared to everything else and prices across the world are rising. But uh, I think for 200, I think it's 289 on sale. As of this recording, check the date because if you watch this in three years, these prices might have gone up. But something about these lights is a lot of the overseas brands will basically reproduce something and you'll see the exact same thing from another company. I haven't seen this particular light from any other company. Um, I did look around and this doesn't look like anything that's just an, a knockoff. This looks like Oxbeam has actually developed this thing. I've wanted round lights on the front bumper on this thing for a long time. They just look really good with a seven inch headlight. So now I've got a seven inch uh, round off-road light, wired them in with my high beams and uh, I will be doing videos on how to do that kind of stuff here before too long, but it makes it uh, super easy to turn on and off for traffic because these are incredibly bright. No, you shouldn't use these on the highway, but yes, I'm gonna use these on the highway. One of the big concerns I always have with a budget light is the ingress of water, if water will appear inside the lenses. Again, these appear to be very well built. They're not like the old style stuff where there's just a bunch of Allen screws on the outside of it and uh, it was like a cheap seal. I haven't torn them apart, of course, but it does seem like that they're built well, but I will let you know, pay attention to the top comments over time, because if these do leak, I will put an update on when they leaked, and that way you can kind of see how long they lasted. Um, I believe Oxbeam does have a one year, maybe even a two year warranty. I'll put that right here. So these do have an amber clip on cover that I'm gonna buy, um, and I'm gonna try it out with that, just because I do prefer amber after using my Baja Designs fog lights and stuff. And so uh, I'm gonna get those and try that out just because I like the look of amber. It's easier on your eyes whenever you're doing long distance stuff. I don't really think it cuts through rain and fog that much better, but you know, some people do. Something I forgot to mention is once I had these mounted onto the FJ and driving down some mountain roads, they do have more flood beam pattern than I originally thought. And I would still describe these primarily as a spot beam, but because of how bright they are, you do get some light spill on each side of the road or your trail. I was on my way back from filming, flipping through the lights for my personal satisfaction, and lo and behold, there was a giant animal in the middle of the road, and these lights for sure gave me more time to slow down. This is on the way back from filming, so that was very helpful. That's exactly what I bought these for. All right, so here's my high beams on. I don't see anything. Let's turn on these. See if we get anything different. This area is known, this little ranch here, is known for big animals living on it. There they are. And it's dark enough out tonight that I would not be able to notice this if it weren't for the extra light. Honestly, ditch lights would probably do the same thing here, but check this out. I'm gonna zoom in. These guys are right off the side of the road. Big bull elk. There's more in there. Probably can't see it on camera. But just over that fence, there are a ton of elk just waiting in the dark to jump out in front. So anyway, exactly what I bought these for. Very nice to have. If you just need some lights and you don't wanna break the bank, I do think these are a good option. And of course, I do have affiliate links. This is, these are sold on Amazon and Oxbeam's website. But uh, let me know what you guys think about the styling. Let me know what you think about these lights. And uh, I will be doing some videos soon on how to solder. I'll be going farther into it on my Patreon. Some of the simple basics that'll help you save money when you're building your own vehicle just because I know it can be expensive if you take it to a shop. So I'm gonna help you with some of that. And on my Patreon, I will help even more. I'm gonna put up extended versions of those videos on there and uh, they'll be ad free and everything on there as well. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think. I do appreciate you watching and until next time.